you want to pass the GED science exam, you need to know what to study. In this video, I'll be talking about what you need to know about earth science to score 145 on the GED science exam and achieve your goal. This is the 11th video in my GED science series. Like always, it's only an introduction to the topic, but I do hope it'll be a great place for you to start as you begin to study. The earth is our planet. It's almost a sphere, but it's a little flatter around the top and the bottom, which are the North and the South Poles, and it bulges a little around the equator. The equator is the imaginary line that divides the Earth in half. The Earth has three main layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The Earth's crust is the outermost layer. It's between 5 and 64 kilometers thick. It's thinner under the ocean and it's thicker in places where there are geological formations like mountains. The crust is mostly made up of hard rocks like granite and basalt. The next layer is called the mantle. The mantle surrounds the Earth's core. It's much thicker than the crust, about 2,900 kilometers. The mantle makes up 84% of the Earth's volume. It's made up of silica and metals rich in minerals. The temperature of the mantle ranges between 1,000 and 3,700 degrees Celsius. And finally, in the middle is the Earth's core. The core has two major parts, the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is about 2,250 kilometers thick, and it's made of liquid iron. The inner core is about 1,300 kilometers thick, and it's made of solid iron. The inner core is characterized by extreme heat and pressure. The crust is made of large rocky plates that rest on a layer of molten rock. These plates are called tectonic plates. The tectonic plates mostly fit together like a puzzle, but they can move about 15 centimeters every year. You can find the boundary between these plates anywhere where there are major geological formations, like mountain ranges, volcanoes, and oceanic trenches. Earthquakes are the result of the movement between the plates. We call the boundary between the plates margins, and the movement within these margins can either be destructive, constructive, or conservative. Constructive margins occur when plates are moving apart to create more space. Molten material from underneath the crust moves up to create more crust. Destructive margins happen when plates collide with one another and crust is destroyed. When this happens, the crust might crumple and form mountain ranges like the Andes Mountains in South America. Conservative margins are those where plates are sliding by one another, but crust is neither created nor destroyed. This sliding is experienced as earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault in California is an example of a conservative margin. About 250 million years ago, all the continents on Earth existed together as one supercontinent called Pangaea. Through movement of the tectonic plates over hundreds of millions of years, the supercontinent broke apart and the pieces traveled to the locations and formations that we know now. Okay, so that was a very brief overview of the composition of the Earth and tectonic plates that will be helpful for you as you study for the GED science exam. Of course, there's much more to know about this, so I recommend that you take some time with a GED preparation manual, watch videos like those on Crash Course and Khan Academy, and let us know in the comments what questions you have. Remember that you don't need to be an expert, you just want to be familiar with the type of vocabulary that you will see so that you can read confidently and answer the questions that you'll see on the test. On this channel, I make videos about how to study more effectively so that you can achieve your goals. I already have tons of videos about the GED science test as well as playlists covering the other three exams, and I'll be releasing more videos in the coming weeks about earth science and space science. If this was helpful for you, please press the like button so that YouTube knows that this is a great resource for studiers. It's your support that allows me to take the time to make these resources for you. So thank you as always for watching, and until next time, happy studying.